Now stop beating your gums and sound the attack. All right, hello, 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 and welcome everyone to another episode of the We Got The Chocolates podcast. What number are we up to now, boys? Mitch has, I think this will be episode number 33, in fact, so they're chugging along, kicking goals. And has, we've got someone exciting again, we always love an interview on this particular podcast, obviously, we're trying to get one out every fortnight, so who are we speaking to today? Yeah, another big interview today, uh, our guest is a professional cricketer. And he's from England. But we don't get many of them. No, we've had a couple on. Uh, uh, thanks to a few contacts I've got in that area. But, uh, but yeah, don't, don't tune out just yet, just hearing that he's from England. But uh, I can guarantee he's got some great stories to share with us about himself and uh, also some of our most loved Aussie cricketers as well. He's played 48 first class and 22 list A games for Queensland and Glamorgan, uh, as well as second 11 cricket for Kent, Essex and Derbyshire. Uh, I've had the pleasure of playing and training with him for the past few years and he's a good mate of mine. We're, of course, talking about Charlie Hemphrey. Charlie, welcome. How are you? Good, thanks, boys. Yeah, good. How are you? Charlie, that is very very well, thank you, by the way. This is Lee. Uh, I'll just do my little speaking test because uh, my brother is Mitch and he sounds exactly the same as me, so here's him. Yep. Hey, Charlie, how's it going? Uh, a little bit deeper there, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Actually, Mitch, you might have played with Charlie when you were like eight years old or something at Redlands back in the day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, probably not. But I didn't know that you played at Redlands. Um, but yeah, I think I would have been a few years after, maybe. Okay, we'll get onto that at some stage. Actually, yeah. Charlie, I just want to say that uh, your resume is probably one of the better ones that we've read out. Some great length to it. Plenty, plenty of interesting yeah. things to read. So um, you've really classed up the episode straight away there. <laughs> oh, I try. No, it's um, yeah, it's a interesting, dif- uh, different road to to a lot of people. But um, yeah, hopefully we can come across uh, get across some good stories <laughs> yeah definitely look you were born in Yorkshire I believe and uh, grew up in Kent in England and played senior cricket for club side Hartley Country Club who were one of the strongest sides in the Kent Premier League um, for quite a while there including the time where I was over playing for Bexley also there's a, uh, a tree on the ground your home club ground at Hartley and, and it's that. a real square yeah. boundary where it's sort of the fence line of the, uh, the, the next door neighbour's property or whatever is the farm next door is a square fence line for the boundary rope yeah, so it comes sort of in as a bit of a ninety degree um, angle in that top corner. Um, yeah, uh, old mate didn't want to sell off one of his six acres. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Charlie, I've always heard like I, that's what I love about cricket in England is you actually do play on different grounds and see things like that all the time like treat well probably not all the time but definitely like one boundary can be 20 meters another boundary can be 150 meters and then there can be trees on them and stuff have you you always hear about like these these stories of you know most runs ever scored off a cricket ball where one's been lodged in the top branch for trees <laughs> and they've run 75 have you ever seen anything like that um i've never seen that yeah you're right there's plenty of plenty of uh, examples of that in england whether it's sort of really steep up, uphill boundaries as, as you get out of the boundary um, the tree at Hartley yeah, if you hit that on the full it's six even if the fielder is underneath it it's only 10 yards in from the boundary but obviously you know a top edge that isn't going for six uh, manages to be six if it just lands on top of the tree so. yeah, so they, that's right because they always have like home rules they almost have like house rules don't they it's like a home home ground rules they just set them yeah it's like yeah, our ground our rules um, <laughs> Yeah. And uh, something, Charlie, we love asking people about on the show is about their nicknames and uh, what the story is behind them. Um, there's probably one prominent nickname you have in the Queensland squad that I shouldn't bring up, but oh, maybe I'll shorten it so people can hear about it. So tell, tell us why you have the nickname Sly. Where, where does that come about from? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think that... Well, not I think, I, I know. it was. I went through a, a stage... Um, you know, like Snapchat and all this stuff. And if you're in a conversation or a sort of three or four way conversation um, and someone's really getting going or, you know, really expressing their views, I would slyly film them. Um, or, if, <laughs> or if, you know, if someone was just eating something or getting, picking their nose, whatever, 
Um, I would, yeah, I'd whip out the phone and, yeah, I got caught, <laughs> got caught a, couple, a couple of times and, yeah, it stuck, stuck from there, really. So you're almost like a member of the paparazzi, Charlie, for just around yeah. your teammates. You have to be careful when Charlie's uh, in the gym around you because he'll be filming you when you've got your, your face on trying to lift a heavy, oh, heavy that. getting that's a deep perfect. squat and that stuff like that. Perfect. Uh, it has you enough to yeah. worry too much about that, would you? Yeah, I don't do too many heavy squats, but, uh, <laughs> but he does try and target me sometimes, I reckon, Charlie. Yeah, I think when you know when you had the long hair and it was flopping around everywhere and you were doing, <laughs> doing, your, doing your hip thrusts, that was worth problem. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I don't blame you. Charlie, totally <laughs> off topic question. Well, sort of on topic, but um, you, you mentioned Snapchat, which is obviously quite probably a youthful mode of communication these days. Have you got yourself on TikTok? It's a big, big flavour of the month. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, has, we should move on. Then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, introduce well, that tomorrow. <laughs> another one. Another one. People might need to know about is why you're called dinner suit. Yeah, that. Um, well, I tried to get rid of that about five <laughs> years ago. You try to pass it on to other people, don't you? <laughs> um, I think what the story behind that was my third Shield game was against Victoria in Alice Springs, obviously. Hot as balls. Yeah, what a place to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was late on day two. We fielded all day. Um, so bearing in mind at this stage, I just I was working at the airport. Um, I was wasn't fit or strong. I was comfortable. I was just a club player, you know, uh, with that sort of physique. Um, and yeah, I batted for a bit on day one, a session or so, and then it was late on day two. We filled it all day and um, leading edge went over my head at cover and I think it it landed about two feet behind me but I was pretty, pretty fatigued at this point and um, turned rather slowly and didn't dive for the ball uh, to try and catch it. Um, so I'm pretty sure it was Chris Lynn came up with that one and then yeah, it got into Renners at Toomball and it's stuck ever since. Uh, you, you, didn't my, get your, my, you didn't want to get your whites dirty. Is it, like, a dinner is it like you were wearing your dinner suit so you didn't want to die? Yeah, <laughs> that pretty much. That, that was the thought behind it, yeah. It's, if I'm feeling in something, I don't want to watch. So. It's quite clever in all reality, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, got a couple of layers to it. I like that. Requires some yeah. Well, it's pretty good for Lenny. He's not the sharpest one. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, your, uh, your cricketing journey is obviously probably one that we, we will focus on a, a reasonable amount here, but um, you've always obviously been a good batsman, a, a strong batsman, but it's my understanding that you uh, actually were picked in your first, well, in a Kent representative side, um, more for actually your right arm off spin. Like when you first came over to Australia, I remember you taking your bowling very, very seriously. Um, can you sort of tell us how, I guess, your batting and bowling skills have progressed over over the years from from your younger years until sort of now I guess where probably batting is your predominant skill isn't it is that fair to say yeah yeah definitely uh, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to think my bowling was my predominant skill now, <laughs> you, you actually got me out last year Charlie so let's just be <laughs> easy here <laughs> um, well yeah I think when I was 18 19 I was I was like on a rookie contract at Kent um, as an all round I always considered myself as a more of a batter but I'd I did bowl a lot more and, and took you know, a decent amount of wickets. Um, and then, yeah, that that didn't really, you know, so I got released from Kent. Um, I tried for a year as a, you know, I wanted to play as a batsman, but I was, I was really playing for them as for Essex more as a bowler and then gave up on that dream really of trialling and playing cricket and ended up moving here and um, part-time off spin or, Gen, general spin to spin in Australia doesn't really have a great deal of future unless you're very very good so continue to work on my backing more than anything and still still bowl a bit bowl a lot more in England last year but you know here not doesn't spin pitches don't break up shield games don't tend to go four days so uh, yeah focus on my backing a lot more and because um, it's pretty so far I had to face myself up I won't be too worried. Um, and you've also you've had a little bit of a battle in recent times with uh, Matt Renshaw for the Queensland Bulls to do with who's going to be the first uh, choice part time off spinner used in Sheffield Shield games. Um, and what what's your sort of thoughts on on where that battle is at? Would you? Um, yeah, well, I think it. My eyes, it's quite um, it's quite clear. Renshaw, <laughs> to be fair, 
to be fair, uh, it's developed into quite a, well, as you can see in the Big Bash, a useful white ball off spinning option. But I think when the captain wants to, you know, a few revs on the ball and potentially you know, an attacking <laughs> second spin option, I'd consider myself above him. So, Don't hold yeah. any punches, Charlie. Yeah. Say it yeah. how you, yeah. how you want to say. Have no. you got him covered in <laughs> celebrations? Do you reckon, Charlie, or has he got you there? No, you know, Ren, you know what Renner's like. He's um, <laughs> enjoys enjoys the camera, and, and you know, he's always on the mic. So uh, that's not that's not my style. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of wickets over him to Morgan, but there's no celebrations there. Just um, hand up in the air. <laughs> you were you were throwing the ball before Renner's uh, by was he during a shield game at the SDG this year? So I think you maybe are winning that battle in four day cricket at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, you know, I had to um, I had to really um, work hard with Izzy on that one because he was saying, "Oh, you're not bowling in club cricket," which is which I don't, uh, which is slightly frustrating. So I had to literally bowl him in the nets for about an hour um, <laughs> to prove my worth that yeah you know, I might actually. Been it a bit more than Renner's. So. I bowled a Renner's um, for about an hour that day as well, but I didn't get a bowl. So <laughs> everyone wanted to face some left arm off spinners because we were playing Steve O'Keefe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Now nah, you have sore shoulder, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. When, um, and Charlie, when Renner's was on the show, he, he ran us through his team of the best 11 players that he's managed to dismiss with his part time <laughs> office. I was wondering if you're sort of keeping tabs on any, any big scalps you've managed to get over the years or if you've got a similar team. Um, well, I don't know. I haven't really thought about a team, but I'll run you through some names that uh, are in the pocket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. There's, there's Joe Roots in there. Oh, um, gosh, Steve, good scout. Steve Smith's in there. Oh, what? When was uh, that? Uh, he played for Seven Oaks in the Kent League. Yeah, got him out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason Holder, I got last year in, in county cricket. Uh, Ed Cowan's in there. Travis Head. Um, Ryan Tender Scarf, you might have heard of. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, there's some decent yeah, right yeah. there already. Yeah. 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 I'll have to go back up. and listen to Renner's interview, but I think that sounds like a more impressive team thus far. So. Oh, the batting lineup's definitely better. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, I <laughs> uh, I'm sure Minus would be in there. Yeah, <laughs> has to be. Yeah. Sure. sure. He's yeah. in everyone's. He was in Renner's as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. Now, Charlie, you oh, Burnsy. Burnsy, oh. Joe Burns. Oh, yeah. Joe Burns. Can't forget him. He's in there. When did you get him in? Oh, uh, Club cricket. cricket. Yeah, they're always great yeah. stories to you, those what? Because <laughs> um, he, he, keep, he calls himself Burgy, doesn't he? B- Burgy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah he sets his, um, sits down and starts every season. And, uh, yeah. He wants to win the Pete Burge medal. Um, <laughs> in the three games he plays. But doesn't want to play any yeah, club cricket yeah, either. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you think maybe winning the Shield Player of the Year or you know, Test Cricket, but no, he definitely wants to win that Pete Burge medal. <laughs> oh, they're great aspirations. Um, <laughs> Charlie, just because, you've, just because you've already mentioned it a couple of times, and it's it's probably a story that I've never actually heard uh, in in its complete state, what actually was the inspiration for you coming to Australia when you did? Um, it, was just, it was a lifestyle change. Um, it wasn't a cricket decision. It was just a yeah. There wasn't. A, I didn't really have see much for the future, and I wanted to come over here. I made friends here in my you know when I come over and play for Redlands and uh, all those years ago. Um, enjoyed the lifestyle. Um, and just yeah, that was it really. It was uh, purely, um, you know, it wasn't really work related, wasn't cricket related. It was just, just uh, England wasn't for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I, yeah, I was always unsure if it was sort of that the cricket was the inspiration for it, but it was more just the fact that too much rain in England, more sunshine <laughs> in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the English winters are incredibly depressing. I mean, <laughs> imagine a rainy day here. Um, 80% of the time, eight months of the year. Oh, yeah, it wasn't um, light at the end of the tunnel in my eyes. So. <laughs> yeah, very fair. Now, Charlie, you, Charlie, you did obviously mention uh, that when you first came out to Australia uh, that you knew, you said you knew a couple of guys from Redlands and that's how you ended up there originally, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, well, we're going back a long way here. Yeah, um, when was, what year was that? I first came out in 2007, eight season. Yeah. Um, because I got on well with a guy called James Treadwell, 
who oh yeah we remember from, Treddy as well yeah yeah he's from Kent obviously but he came out and played at Redlands um, through Spud actually um, by the time I got there Spud left but I also knew the Myers brothers um, yeah. the, the Dwyer brothers oh, um, yeah, right. and then obviously you got to know, you know people there Blair um, mm. and sort of struck up that that friendship straight away um, so I ended up playing nearly three seasons for England um, just coming out coming out every summer yeah that's right so you just went um, yeah went back and forth how old were you when you first came you might have mentioned 18. that already 18 yeah yeah 18 yeah yeah right so I just came out played I think third grade um, third grade second grade and then played the last half of the year in first grade so uh, Shane Watson played then um I think of the other guys. Ryan Lalu was playing. You would have had like Matt Petrie then as well, wouldn't you? Yeah, Petrie, Moller, Josh Guy, Adam Lynch. It was a good side. Good side. Lots of fun. Good Redlands era, that. Yeah, yeah. I had a great time. Obviously, came back. Came back a few more years after that. Um, But yeah, in the end, I because when I moved here permanently, 2013, I I was living in, in Nanda, so. And I did. I knew knew Chris Lynn, so I ended up just playing for Toonball because it's yeah, closer. We were we were uh, about to grill you about that, man. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, that was the follow up question. What what happened there to make you make you sort? Because you, you've moved around to a few clubs now. I mean, I think you'd have to be up there with Lethal in the. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I'm not allowed to ask that question because I've played for more than you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on my third um, and last. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I um, yeah played at Toonball when I when I first moved here and at the time they had, they had a good side uh, Luke Thomas back um, Ryan Harris obviously Lenny Boise mm. um, Saber Renners was coming through so it was a good team to play in because you know, there's a lot you know, a lot of people to learn off so at that time I was just working at the airport um, throwing bags and meandering through and yeah. Um, yeah, just learned a lot off those guys and did, did quite well for Toonball um, and got picked in the second level on the back of that, really. Was that, and what, what sort of was the process like, I guess, for progressing, obviously, that season uh, where you went from club cricket to getting an opportunity to play for Queensland? It's a strange one, really, because I remember I played two second level games before Christmas that season, so 14, 15 season, and I got 100 in the second game, and then that was it, no more second level. And, and then Shield Cricket broke off a big bash. I wasn't even thinking about Shield Cricket. Because I, I was working at the A4 and I, was, I wasn't earning a great deal of money, I, I just remember thinking, oh, I just want to play the first Deck 11 game after Christmas. So I, wanted, I needed the, the money. The money would have been nice. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> I, was, I was at work. Um, so we got this phone call and Trevor Holmes. And he said, oh, I thought, brilliant playing the second level game just what I wanted and he said no um, you're playing the Shield game don't know staff today at the Gabo against Victoria and I genuinely said I said oh yeah good one who is this um, <laughs> nice one and he was like no no it's Cracker um, <laughs> yep yep you're playing Saturday see you there uh, Sternsy the coach will be in touch good luck and I was it put the phone down and I was like <laughs> right <doesn't> okay <laughs> <laughs> um, who First thing I thought was who the Victorian bowlers, and mm-hmm. I was reading the reading all the time. It's Jimmy Patterson, his first game back for Victoria for two years. Uh, um, oh, I got told I was opening as well, so that's what I'd never done at that point. So you I'd weren't even you weren't even opening for Toomble at that stage. No, I was playing four. Oh, jeez, right. Um, I was like, yeah, so I was thinking, oh, what bowl have they got? Oh, still trying to test with you. Jimmy Pattinson, one of the quicker guys going around. So I thought, right, well, nothing to lose here. It can only get easier than this. So, yeah, went in, got naught. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were, we were three for seven. Um, yeah, we actually, we filled a second. Um, Troy got 250. We were three for seven. Linny got 250, Hartley 100. Oh, yeah. we, we won by innings and five runs. I didn't want to bat in that second inning. <laughs> <laughs> but then so, they, they retained you for the next game, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, 
obviously showed them enough in the two balls I faced. <laughs> um, they couldn't say you were batting poorly. Yeah, <laughs> didn't get a chance. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, made the next trip down to Tassie and yeah, went from there. That's yeah, class. Right. Perfect. Um, and so going going back to your, your club cricket, um, Charlie, so what ended up happening with the end of Toonball? So you, you're now at Sandgate, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, as I said, the, the people who were playing at Toonball and I learned a lot of, they'd moved on, um, retired and left the game. So right. uh, it also coincided with the worst Shield season I've had. I think I've averaged eight in about four games. We train and play all week. You want to turn up on a Saturday and enjoy it. So yeah, right. I made the decision that um, it was the best thing for my career and yes yeah, it's, it's worked out well because I've done it right it's going to Sangate and it's nice to turn up on Saturday and, and enjoy the boys you're playing with so yeah no absolutely that's great that you've, you've sort of found a club that you're, you're happier at mate and so so at the time when you made your first class debut for Queensland you were counted as a local player by then not an overseas one is that correct? yeah yeah local um, so permanent what, resident what yeah. was the qual- yeah, what, what was, was the qualifying time work? for that? Um, the four year process. Oh, jeez, right. That's a decent yeah. commitment. Yeah, yeah. So it started a while out um, in you know, in the UK. Um, but yeah, eventually got there. Literally a week before my second eleven game because they they couldn't pick me for that. Um, until I became permanent. So I remember Gavin Fitness pushing my case to get picked. And he kept ringing me saying, you know, are you a resident? Are you a resident? Has it come through yet? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, finally it came through and um, just in time for, yeah, that's the I'm going. Oh, that's class, man. And now, and what about, what about sort of now, I guess, Charlie, that you're, you're obviously sort of allegiances have probably recently changed again as you're now an overseas for Queensland um, because you've, you've signed on to play for Glamorgan over in England. Um, is that correct? How, how's that sort of, is it easy enough the process going back the other way, like going back and playing for Glamorgan? Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm the overseas player here, so I, I can play on my local, my English passport in for Glamorgan. So the reason behind that was the only way around I could do both. Um, I can't play. I can't play as an overseas England because I haven't played for Australia or or international cricket, yeah. and I haven't, I haven't played to any big bash. So. Uh, I said to Queensland, I've had this offer. Um, they said, yeah, great. I said, the only thing I need to be switched to an overseas. And they're happy happy to do that. So that was a, a bit of a drawn out process um, with Cricket Australia and, and Queensland Cricket to um, re, rewrite, rewrite the wording for the rule, basically. So I can actually revoke on that tomorrow and become a a local player for Queensland again. Um, oh, right. Should, should Australia want to pick me or for whatever reason. So once we got around that, um, yeah, signed the, signed the Morgan deal and, and went over there and, and played there last year. And Charlie, how many uh, how many seasons are you going back to back now? Because obviously that's what this must be your third at least and then you're going straight back to Glamorgan. So that'll be four yeah, um, I'm not contracted at Queensland next year at the moment. I'm, my, this is my, I'm in my last year, so yeah, hopefully I have a five and a six. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, there'll be a time where I have to have a look and t- take a step back. Obviously, starting the family. Um, yeah, true. It's, it's not 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 that easy to to do both. Um, you know, sort of more than anything, you know, have their best best interests at heart, but. Um, it gives me options, which is nice. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I might not get offered a, a Queensland contract for next year. If that's the case, then then so be it. But had, you know, we had a, a great time over at the Morgan, um, and yeah, signed signed a couple more years there, which is which is great. Um, so yeah, it's probably is one of the best things I've done cricket wise oh, to go over there and, and and play in the county cricket which um, is a different system to here, but I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and Charlie, I was going to, well, I was going to ask you sort of what you get up to outside of cricket to keep, to keep yourself entertained you know, with all those sort of back-to-back seasons. I suppose a family would take up a fair chunk of time. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there anything else that you, any other hobbies you've got that we should know about, mate? Um, well, I love my, 
horse racing. So I used to get down to the track a fair bit. Um, but yeah, I've got a, a six months old now. So um, obviously when I'm not away playing, it's, it's great to spend some time at home with with him. Um, and obviously it gives my wife a, a bit of a, a bit of a break because it's, it's pretty full on. Um, you'll you'll get there one day. Yeah, um, so I was going to say I can only imagine it at the moment. <laughs> but, but no, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it. yeah, you know when I get back in in town and yeah, you know, I'm at home for a few days. I appreciate what what Rihanna, uh, my wife, does while I'm, while I'm away for four or five days or ten days in a row. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, and so you don't you they only grow at once, so you wanna spend as much time as you can and don't don't miss out on that. So that's um takes up a lot of my time now and which is which is great. And Charlie uh, Rihanna, uh English or Australian? Australian. Oh, nice. And she's happy to brace uh, the English summer. She goes with you every year obviously. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, um well we had Alistair over there uh last July, so that was um that was a huge commitment of hers um, to, to agree to do that to let me play cricket. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, she she loved Cardiff. Um, can't wait to, to get back there. And despite what people say, the English summer is actually they're actually quite nice. Um, and long long days and not you know, can be nice and warm, but not too hot. Um, so yeah, we're really looking forward to, to going back. Um, and obviously with. Uh, so it'll be nine months by then, so um, that will hopefully make things a little bit easier than two months old. It's, it's all it's all quite manic at that age. And uh, Charlie, is Alistair named after your favourite left-handed opening batsman by any chance? Or <laughs> um, no, it's an interesting story. I get this all the time. Um, <laughs> I mean, my my favourite left-handed batsman, uh, Sam Hazlitt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded very it's convincing. Right. <laughs> but it's not it's it's not Matt Renshaw, so <laughs> um no, it's obviously yeah, I, I have met Sir Alistair Cook, um he's a very nice man, he had a lot of time for Rihanna and I, um, in a pub in London. Um but also <laughs> We were talking about names, and we really, really turned to me and said, oh, I've met two Alistairs in my life. Um, Alistair Cook, and he's very nice, very polite, obviously, you know, fantastic cricketer, and her sports teacher, who she also likes, and, <laughs> and got on well with. So um, we Googled it, and Alistair, is the, the, the meaning behind the name is strong leader of men. So oh, that is a good sign. So that was it. <laughs> Sold. Um, so yeah, there's a bit a bit of truth behind that. And uh, you're now at Glamorgan. Uh, you, you, so you mentioned you're playing there now. You, you're joined with uh, there with friends of the show, Nick Selman and Minus Labashane. What's it been like to play with those guys uh, since knowing them over here in Australia? Oh, Charlie, surely Selly would uh, support the horse racing <laughs> hobby. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, yeah, he definitely does. He is, he's pretty good. He knows knows what he's talking about. Um, type of man in the world behind probably has. Yeah, so, I was going to say, I thought um, there was one key name you were forgetting there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think um, you're known to be a bit like that as well, Charlie, if you mention it there. No, 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 just smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what everyone who's tight says. That's everyone's reason behind it. <laughs> no, Haz, you're smart. Yeah, you're still living at home. That's switched on that. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, so got to know Steli quite well, and obviously spent a lot of time opening and batting with him. He's um, he's different, a different character, um, but yeah, like him, um, funny, um, got on really well with him to be fair. So uh, absolutely, guy, you know, minus about three, you know, two two different characters there. So I kind of um, like to see myself as the mellow one in between those two. Um, but yeah, Minus obviously had a great year over there. Um, that's been well documented. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not surprised. He got you know went into a different environment and, and thrived. Um, spent a lot of time with him off the field as well. Um, and yeah, got closer because we yeah, we're very different people and yeah, probably weren't 
all that close. Well, you know, before before we went there, but um, you travel and play, and obviously it rains a bit more over there. Spend a lot of time in changing rooms and um, on coaches and whatever. So yeah, we grew quite close and actually have a lot more in common than we first thought. So that was that was, that was good, and obviously to see him go on and do what he's done. I don't think anybody quite thought he'd do that, but. Um, I saw the work he put in over there, um, yeah, with different coaches and, and whatever, and good on him. I was uh, I was going to ask how you were going to manage spending at least two years straight with him uh, all year round, <laughs> but uh, fortunately you might not have to do that if he's busy playing for Australia, which he looks like he <laughs> may be for quite a while to come. Yeah, um, well, you see, he's certainly done well in the one day as well, so um, yeah, well, he'll still be over there for couple of months which um, yeah that'd be long enough but no he um, as I said we ended up getting on really well and um, we speak about you know not just cricket which you know, we both have we're both fond of and love talking about but you know lots of other stuff in, in life and yeah hopefully he gets to spend as much time as possible playing over at Oak Morgan because I know he, how much he loves it um, the boys boys loved having him so well uh, can we can we expect the same progress you reckon from you next season uh, you've, we've seen him develop quite a lot from being Good Morgan there do you reckon you've got the same improvement in, in you the next couple of years um, well you can only hope you can only hope um, yeah if in a year's time I'm averaging 65 in test cricket then we can look back at this and, and laugh at it but I think um, we, we've always known how good a player he could be Um probably just didn't quite allow himself to be that good. Um, you know, he went over there as the overseas player and that goes with added pressure. Um, and yeah, a lot's been made of him working with, with the coach um, over there. And um, but a lot, a lot of it to me just came down to, to confidence and the fact that games just rolled on over there. You play four days, you travel the next day, you play again. And he was, he was seeing him really well and just, kept flowing from one game to another and and got into this mindset, you know, he, he was always going to score 100. Um, it didn't work all the time, but it worked, I think, 500 in 16 innings for them all. And so that's, that's pretty good. And that was always his biggest downfall was not getting 100. So he, he figured that out pretty quick. Um, yeah, and since then he's gone on to dominate. And Charlie, uh, uh, he's usually he's usually pretty good both on and off the uh, cricket field for a story. Manus, have you got any favourite Manus stories? Um, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you guys know about his spelling. Um, oh, his spelling. <laughs> yeah, oh, so yeah, his spelling got um, tested a lot over there. Obviously, uh, and the Welsh have their own language. Um, which is a whole new kettle of fish. Um, so he, so we they were trying to make him spell good. Welsh words when he can't spell uh, we, Well, I think the guys thought, oh, we'll get him onto a few Welsh words, but when he, he struggled with uh, fountain as his first word, I think he started with F-O-N-T-I-N. Um, <laughs> I think they, I think they um, took it down a peg or two, and then by the end, <laughs> like his batting, by the end he'd improved outside. And yeah, we we're having to read the newspaper to find words to test it with. So well, I don't quite know where, where he's at with that now. Well, that's the um, thing about him, isn't it? He he refuses to be bad at stuff. So even with spelling, he'll actually find a way to practice. <laughs> yeah, and that was it. Even if he got a, a word wrong. Um, and everyone started laughing and, and he sort of started to feel a bit bad for him and he's off. He'd be like, no, no, keep going, keep going. I want to get better. I want to get better. So, yeah, perhaps um, there's a lesson in that for, for everybody, but um, that was probably it. Yeah, obviously we all know about his eating and his, his eating habits and noises. Um, that took a, a bit for the, the uh, Welsh boys to get their head around. Um yeah, the, the chicken wings and the, uh, the noise effects that go with it. But <laughs> after that, after that, they um, they took to him, took to him really well, and yeah, they're, they're pretty excited he's coming back. Um, yeah, probably I helps. Think, yeah, he scored quite a few runs as well. I guess would increase that excitement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it does. I think um, to be fair to Morgan, there's, there's 
done some pretty good business in, in getting him just before the start of the summer here. Um, you know, he's the third best batsman in the world. So, it's a shame, well, it's a shame for them. It's a shame for them all. They're going to be there, I think, for the first two months. That's brilliant for Manus. So. Yeah, definitely. Look, I wanted to go back to the horse racing stuff. Uh, I've heard you talk about horses and their riders and how they run in different conditions, and, and I think you certainly know your stuff. Or so, so I thought. And so, and if if I was ever, you know, needing to earn a quick dollar via gambling, I think you'd be the first person I'd turn to. However, I've been talking to Sally Nick Selman uh, lately, and he's given us some feedback and reckons you can't pick a winner. <laughs> I can't pick a winner. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no, that's what he says. I mean, um, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's typical Selman um, <laughs> glass half empty view on things um, <laughs> you know if, if I knew this was coming I, I would go through my messages to him and screenshot all the time he said to me I've done my ass because I reckon there will be 15 uh, <laughs> different days that um, that that's happened to him but yeah you know if, if, we were, if there was a, a magic formula and you can pick winners. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be um, facing a new ball to gather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly. He, uh, he also wanted you to uh, talk us through the time you ran him out, second ball of a four-day game. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, playing at Radlett, um, against Middlesex, Radlett's a lovely outground in the Watford area. And that week happened to be Royal Ascot. So, uh, we fielded first. Um, the Middlesex got a decent score, 380 maybe. Anyway, so Sellers has been facing first ball, and I said, oh, how about I just, I'll go down the bottom end, you go to the top end, and whoever's facing, facing. He said, yeah, cool. Um, so I'm yeah, facing Tim Mercer, blocked the second ball to cover. Um, bearing in mind, there's three slits in the galley and a, a straight extra cover mid off kind of who got kind of fielder um, so I popped into the gap called yes everyone loves getting off the mark um, still <laughs> hint slow to get going and you know uh, not the most athletic shall we say um, <laughs> and, and you know bearing in mind uh, as I said it was it was Royal Ascot week so I'm pretty sure he quite hadn't got his head around facing the board still thinking about <laughs> a, a probable loss in the last race <laughs> or a bet he's got going on later in the day so anyway we've crossed well not halfway because I've made it past halfway and I hear him go oh f*** trouble uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah he's run out he's run out by about a foot um, direct hit didn't help but I still maintain that if it wasn't Ascot week and it Maybe minus. It was, it was an easy one. So, um, well, uh, safe to say that I didn't get to face first ball again. Uh, <laughs> so, if Selly was a racehorse, Charlie, you're not backing him. He's not built for sprints. No, no, he'd be, um, he'd be a slow four miler racing out at Mount Isa or something. Like <laughs> Charlie, just on, on another player that you've probably seen quite a bit of that the Australian public probably doesn't know that much about, um, but was obviously announced uh, in the Sydney Test, he was in the 12, I guess, this year, was Mitch Swepson, who you've played quite a bit of club cricket with, um, and obviously also shield cricket for Queensland as well. Uh, were you surprised to see Swepo in that Australian squad, or you think that's quite well-deserved, or you're quite supportive of that? Uh, I think, um, you know, obviously, Sydney Test, you are going to make a change to bowling attack. It's probably going to it's going to be a, a spinner in, but very hard to drop any of those bowlers. Yeah, seam bowlers. Yeah. Um, no matter how good the spinner is, they still have to still have to know that the spinner is going to do a better job than what the seamers are doing. So, um, but in terms of Swepo, you know, obviously he had a, a tough year last year. Um, didn't play the one day this year, but I've I've never seen him bowl better through club cricket, um, second eleven, and then he's he's played those few shield games and has, has done brilliantly. He's bowled really, really well, and so that's credit to him. So in terms of if they're looking for a second spinner, you got the control and skill line at one end. I don't think there's any value in picking a, a as good a bowler as O'Keefe or Holland are. 
um, the general wicket taker is Swapo. So with Bangladesh in mind, um, yeah, I think it was it was the best thing they could have done. Um, I, I didn't expect him to play, um, which you know, was just fine. But obviously, you got to bowl to the boys and chat to chat to Shane Wall when he was down there, and and yeah, as long as he's, he's bowling somewhere where he's where he's at or has been for Queensland this year, then he do he do a fine job for Australia. Yeah, Shane Warne was very supportive. Yeah. I think all you have to do, to be fair, is actually bowl leg spin for Shane Warne to support you. But, yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's always a good person to have in your corner. Yeah, I think, well, you know, you're, you've got Shane Warne on side if you're Marcus Stornis or <laughs> bowl leg spin or bowl 150Ks. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think you know, Warne is obviously... It's quite blinkered in his view on the game, but um, you know, to be fair to Swapo, he's done a lot of work with John Davison at Queensland, and and that's um, that's credit to those two and and Davo for for getting Swapo back to or well, yeah, probably bowling as well as ever. So yeah, um, yeah hopefully he gets on that tour to Bangladesh and um, and can prove or not prove, but show everybody how. How, how well he's been bowling, how good he is. Yeah, no, that is great, great news for old Swepo, but probably tough to ask Lyon to sit on the sidelines, you'd think, wouldn't you? <laughs> when Shane Ward came out <laughs> with that statement, Charlie, saying, was it time for Nathan Lyon to have a rest <laughs> so that Swepo yeah. could play? We were rattled by that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, that um, yeah, yeah our cut, well, as, uh, as Nathan Lyon said, um, <laughs> yeah. he went hit. I don't think he's out. Out and that gave Stuart McGill again, so <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Doesn't quite work. Doesn't quite work like that. I don't think, but mm, yeah, you know, wrong. Anyway, um, and Aussie, Ch- comment, Aussie, comment, Aussie commentators, um, yeah, they're not always on the mark. I think he just runs out of things to say, Shane. Sometimes, so he just <laughs> needs, <laughs> yeah, trying to <laughs> fill five days. <laughs> he just needs to get <laughs> another headline. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, you're right. Um, and Charlie, we've seen you in in shield cricket. We've seen you bat everywhere from. Obviously, you talked a fair bit about opening. Um, all the way down to I think number five, um, but I just wanted to ask what your favourite, what your sort of favoured batting position is. If you've got any preference, where you where you think you do best? Um, I didn't. I bat five a bit this year. I didn't enjoy that. Um, okay. As you can, you can have, you can have that bat. <laughs> um, <laughs> to be honest, I think I I played best uh, when I opened. Um, don't know why. I don't know if it's in fact it's it's tough. Um, you know, I've, I've been scored many runs down at five and seemed to miss out at, at the MCG, which is the flattest wicket in the world. So I don't know quite why um, why that is, but yeah, I'd, I'd say opening um, when I'm playing well because it's, it's a job that not many people want to do. So it's, it's rewarding when you do well yeah. in a role and yeah, you get to set the game up for your team and yeah, the bowlers love someone in their team who can bat for hours on end. So, yeah, you know, I don't mind being that person. And yeah, going over to county cricket is tough, tough place to open England. Um, just a lot more balls hitting the stumps, didn't bounce as much, um, mitts around a bit more. So that was um, an eye opener. So to have some some success at that was, was quite rewarding. And yeah, I think. To have two good openers is quite invaluable. Um, you look at any good side there, protect the middle order, protect the glory boys down at five. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you didn't like being the glory boy though, Charlie? No, I don't have the shot. I only got about four shots. <laughs> 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 um, and then Charlie you probably haven't obviously had the same opportunities in one day cricket as you have in Red Bull stuff for Queensland but is it a goal of yours to, to continue to I mean you've already spoken about your contracts as set up but, but is it a goal of yours to continue to uh, play more white ball games and, and both in county cricket as well yeah definitely I think you know, everyone wants to play as, as much as possible with white ball interesting one white ball cricket because some people make it look extremely easy um, you know like has and have uh, <laughs> been people who, yeah, if you look at their stats, have had more success in that format. You know, I, I haven't found it as easy. Um, I've been you know, around the order a bit more. Uh, I actually ended up batting six for Glamorgan, which I enjoyed. Um, as I said, I've only got about four shots. So when 
fielders are out on the boundary, it's a lot easier to get off strike. But when the field's up and you've got to hit over the top and pause and cuts and innovate a bit, I leave that up to the other boys. But um, I'd love to play more one day cricket. Um, whether it happens or not, I don't know. Because, yeah, I mean, Max Bryant's come in, done well. Runners is becoming a, a good, very good white ball player. Um, whether there's opportunities or not, I don't know. Um, but hopefully I've finished the season well and, yeah, come back refreshed and watch, watch the <laughs> watch the big bash. And, although, to be fair, I didn't watch last night. Um, I was at the Elton John concert. Um, <laughs> oh, right. oh, really? Well, that was probably better to watch. Yeah, <laughs> much better view. Yeah, yeah. But if we can, I'll become the interviewer here. Has what talk me through it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm still not sure what happened there. I uh, yeah, I got out myself and went in the change room, and then we lost a couple more wickets by the time I got out into the dugout and watch <laughs> to watch to watch more. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a crazy crazy game the way it panned out there, and um, unfortunately, it's we've had some similar. Similar performances this year, so so something needs to be done, that's for sure. To be fair, Haz, I didn't think it was that bad. You were known for 80 or 5 overs and then all out for 110, so you'd take that any day. Yeah, yeah we we're probably the better team for the first, <laughs> for, for the first like, 60% of the game at least, and then, uh, then really went downhill from there. Well, that's it. I, I literally, I, was, I think there was a break. Elton, old Elton had to go and change his con- costume, so I checked the score, and yeah, I think Linney just got out. You were one to ninety off six point three overs or something like that. Yeah. That'll be all right. And then yeah, check leaving. I think yeah, lost ten wickets in six okay. overs or something. Yeah. Eight overs. Yeah, ten for thirty six or something like that. Seven for seven, I think, to finish the innings off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was Jeez. yeah, it was a weird one. I, I guess we had the time out and the, and the message was just to rotate the strike and um, tick it over until the fourteenth, but. We kept on losing wickets and we went into our shell a bit too much. Um, here's a question yeah. for you, Has And Charlie, obviously you're on the line as well, so you might be able to provide some insight. Uh, I've heard a few club coaches in club cricket say that they don't like debriefing on the day of a game because there's too much emotion involved and things like that. You, you would have heard that theory a couple of times. Uh, what was Darren Lehman's thoughts on debriefing in the emotion of that moment? Does that in Queensland cricket in general? Does yeah. that, I assume you guys would have to surely talk about the game after a day's play. Yeah, sometimes we don't debrief straight away. Sometimes uh, even after a loss, we'll uh, we'll just say, "I oh, just we'll, we'll talk about it at training next time and gather your thoughts." Until then, but uh, yeah, definitely the big bigger losses, including. The last game there, we, we debrief straight away. And uh, there's, there's not too many times where coaches at that level really give you a big spray because they sort of understand what's going on. They know it's a high-pressure environment that you don't mean to get out, that you're trying to, you know, execute the game plans. But uh, he certainly wasn't happy and and he told us what he thought and, and uh, as he has in, in the past, and that's fair enough. And, and we just haven't played smart enough cricket. We've been, been pretty dummy out there and um, and folded a bit under pressure. So, so he... he didn't mince his words, but um, but yeah, it wasn't a like a, a raging thing where he's throwing things all around the room or anything like that. <laughs> Charlie, have you ever copped any monumental sprays? Um, no, not really. I mean, I I, I agree with the the general. You know, don't be brief. Obviously, we're talking about a four day game here. Um, yeah, you can have a you can have a chat, but I think if the day hasn't gone your way. And a coach comes in and expresses that for whatever reason, whether you haven't batted a ball or well, this, this is only one person that benefits, and that's the coach mm. to get it off his chest. Mm. Yeah, okay. he probably st- he'll end up saying something he doesn't want to say or he doesn't mean or or whatever. The fact is, it's actually gone now. There's nothing you can do about it. Once the game starts, there's not actually a great deal a coach can do. Um, and the best coaches realise that. Um, if, if for whatever reason you're not on top at the end of day one, then then so be it. Um, it's still three days left, and if you win the last three days, then chances are you, you can turn it around and win the game. But yeah, um, yeah that's one thing I you know, certainly learnt from being overseas uh, at Glamorgan that yeah, you, you don't get anything out of a, a spray to the team on on day one or day two, whatever, because chances are both teams haven't batted on the wicket or bowled on the wicket. Um, yeah, if it's, 
you want to talk to the player individually that you know they're doing something wrong and they keep making the same mistake, you know, then fine. But a team collective spray, I just think that is that is only for one person's benefit, um, and it's not the eleven people playing the game. So that's my view in terms of last night. Then it would be pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, yeah, to, to look around, to look to look around the room and say, oh, "Yeah, see you tomorrow, boys. Uh, have a good night." Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> uh, yeah, as as a coach, I mean, you don't want people worried about getting out or when they're out in the middle thinking, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't do this or go for this shot because I'm going to get out." Or you don't want bowlers second guessing their their options or the way they're executing. You want them to players back in their skills. So. They go for a little sandwich technique, you know, the sandwich sort of positive, negative, like well played for the first five overs, boys. Pretty ordinary after yeah. that and everyone's uniform looks nice. <laughs> 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 they definitely chuck some positives in there, but there wasn't wasn't too much to, to in the batting side of things last night. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> You would have been in there. Yeah. Surely he has. Yeah, oh. you could have some positives there. Oh well, I got off to a good start, but should have been there at the end to get the team home. So that was a that was a mistake, I guess. Mm. Okay, fair enough, has he? Um, and Charlie, I just wanted to ask if you've had any sort of major setbacks along the way throughout your career in terms of, I suppose, any big injuries, anything like that that have sort of uh, that you've had, um, to had to sort of get around. No, I've been pretty lucky injury wise. I think broken rib is probably about it. So I've never really. That was a while ago. Um, Who hit you, Charlie? Yeah, uh, Phil Jakes. Um, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> With a side arm. I was like yeah, envisioning yeah. him in punching you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't copped any sprays. Phil Jakes just punched me one time. <laughs> That's a chance. We were boxing every preseason, so you don't yeah, know. That's right. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, no. right. he, he does have he does have some of the flattest feet in the world behind Matt Renshaw, but Charlie. Quite, quite weak arches, don't you, Charlie? Oh, stability, yeah. stability yeah. shoes, Charlie. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I make do. I, I get through. I found a way to to get through. Um, <laughs> yeah, has yeah, has has this right? I do have quite flat feet, and they don't help me in, in some aspects. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't missed games. <laughs> Through flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't often read that as yeah. like, a, oh, Charlie Hemphrey just rises through adversity. He was born with flat feet. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I can't keep, keep that one quiet. Uh, but no, I've been, I've been lucky with that. I mean, there's a season a few years ago where I, I, I averaged eight, I think, or probably not even that in four games. I just couldn't. Um, I'm walking out to bat now, like, Expecting to get out, I like, can't. I don't have confidence in any scoring shot. Um, and yeah, the ball didn't have to be that good to get me out. Um, and yeah, I was fed up with it really. And start the next season, I was playing shield cricket, got back in through grade grade cricket, and I still wasn't scoring well. I was inconsistent. This is the year we won the shield. Um, I was inconsistent. And everyone was doing well, and we were winning, and it's kind of it really wasn't really getting noticed. But I just thought, this, I'm just turning up, and I'm not enjoying not doing well. Like, I'm mm. having great time with the boys, of winning lots of games and whatever. Yeah. And I just thought, now I'm done. Burns, he was coming back from injury, and we're playing at the Gabba against WA, and I just thought, it's my last game, and so I'll play. 20 first class games, scored a couple of hundred. Never thought I'd be in this position, so cool. Um, anyway, I ended up having quite a good game. Um, and yeah, went from there and backed it up again. So it's a very fickle game sometimes. Um, yeah, and yeah, I always said that if I get the chance, before I play for Queensland, if I ever got the chance, then just run with it for as long as you can. If it lasts two years, then great. If it lasts Seven eight years and even better. Um, so that was that was a close to the biggest setback I've had. Um, but yeah, managed to come out the other side and yeah. still going. Which yeah. is good. Uh, we enjoy watching you do well, mate. We're very very glad that you got through that. That's for sure. Um, I have a couple of questions just to round out for you, Charlie, and they might be difficult to answer, uh, but do your best. Uh, you mentioned. You know, teammates loving opening batters that go out and do a great job, that they're always very well-liked humans within the team. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you have a favourite human or, or couple that you've played any form of cricket with? Um, 
Kelly Glammy boys who uh, I enjoyed spending time with, but yeah, give them a shout. I'm sure they're listening. <laughs> Yeah. It's got to be a four it's listeners in England. You reckon it includes both of them? Yeah, I mean, two of the. Don't get tagged in this episode. Yeah, two of the four so. listeners. They just got funny accents, so they're they're not actually that funny. They just sound funny. And, <laughs> and they end up they end up making me laugh. So there's a couple of there. Um, guy called Kieran Carlson. He's always good fun to spend time with. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we played look played very quick together, but we spent some time off the field together. So. Um, yeah, he's definitely up there. Although it's quite a, it's quite a new relationship, or quite a new friendship. So um, we'll see how we go second year round. Um, <laughs> second year blues, pressure's on. <laughs> to, to be fair, you know, a guy that we we all know. I, I haven't seen him much lately, but I always enjoy spending time with Ryan Malou. Um He's very good to me back in when I was a youngster. Um, yeah, someone you. Yeah, love playing and having on your team, but also it's just happy to catch up with and um, yeah, just a all round good bloke. Um, yeah, so he's obviously you know one guy that we all know. Um, yeah, we're lucky. We probably, still get to see him every Thursday night while he's whizzing sidearms past us yeah. at 150 <laughs> kilometres yeah. per hour. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine he's quite aggressive on that because obviously <laughs> fast old mentality, but fortunately. <laughs> Or leg spin, but yeah, um, yeah, I would, I would mind. I'd always look forward to catching up with him. So hopefully, I'll see him again soon. But yeah, he was always um, some of lots of fond memories with um, from a long time ago now. But yeah, yeah, thank yeah you. he'd be up there. Yeah, no, and then Ch- that is an unreal man to have sort of in your corner or, or on your team. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. definitely. And then Charlie, my final question, uh, and the way that we always try and wind up every interview that we do uh, is to ask you if you obviously have any questions of us uh, but generally that just turns into actually people taking the piss out of Has, particularly people in your <laughs> position that that, uh, that have played cricket with him but is there anything that you uh, that you would like to add mate that you feel like we've missed or that needs to be said? Really? No, I think um, I'm sure a lot of the stuff that Has has seen to you for on this um, you know is, is, is nothing new or a lot of the stuff I've got to say it would be Will be nothing new. Um, so we've got the tight ass sure. nature. Yeah, I'm sure he's he's racking up a nice selection of Is hotel um, <laughs> soap and shower gel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've heard that one yet. That's uh, new. Yeah, well, I used to I used to uh, take all the soap and shower gel from the hotel rooms whenever whenever there was some left over at the end of the stay, so I could take it home and didn't have to buy it when I when oh I got home. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, you, my, you my parents denied well, that. Has <laughs> <laughs> my parents did the shopping. I didn't want to have to ask them to buy that sort of stuff for me. So <laughs> <laughs> that's next level. <laughs> didn't they buy it for themselves? Anyway? Yeah, well, we had different bathrooms. Oh right, okay. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Charlie, we appreciate you coming on so much, mate. We've obviously talked about it for a long time. So thank you so much for making yourself available tonight for us to have a chat to. Uh, pleasure. It's been fun. Uh, no, I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully see you all soon. It comes out all right. Absolutely. It most certainly will. I'm a freak at editing, so I'll make oh, sure okay. it sounds pristine. <laughs> uh, but also, Charlie, obviously, just after your stories tonight, we want to make sure that uh, we wish you all the best as well for the for the back half of the season and hope that you have a massive um, four-day sort of shield um, games in the, in, the, in the back end of the season there. Brilliant. No, thanks for that. Um, yeah, hopefully... Hopefully finish well and then yeah, over to Cardiff. Mm, I've stumbled my way through that sentence, but you, you got the sentiment so I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, right. Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Cheers, no man. No worries. Cheers, boys. Cheers, mate. Quick soon. Bye. And thank you very much, everyone. And that was our interview with Charlie Hemphrey. Has uh, one of the great chats, actually. It was a very interesting character to talk to. Someone who's had a slightly different pathway through professional cricket. So some interesting stories from him. Yeah, definitely a little known uh, 
professional cricketer. Not too many would have heard of him because he doesn't play Big Bash and hasn't played international cricket yet. But really good to talk to because he's lot, he got a lot of really good stories, interesting ones, but also a lot of funny ones. So Absolutely. That was, it was great to hear from yeah, him. That was great. Um, so thank you so much for listening to the show, guys, as per usual. Uh, we hope that you liked it as much as we enjoyed making it. And subscribe on either Apple or Spotify, wherever you choose to listen to your podcast. Uh, Obviously, if you could give it a rating as well, particularly if you enjoy it, that would be much appreciated. Um, we definitely want people to liaise with our socials as well, don't we, Has and get in contact with us. Yeah, having a lot, plenty of fun on our socials. I think we're very, very close to 1,000 followers on Instagram too, yeah, so that'll be a special Always happy moment. to give people a like back too. That's one thing we can guarantee. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you can't, but, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> awesome. Um, and, uh, guys, you can find all of those socials in one place. Uh, Mitch has created a website for us. He's not with us at the moment, but he has created a website, which is wegotthechocolates.com.au. Very simple and easy to remember. Um, so please get in contact with us. Let us know any stories you've got from the weekend and your sporting action. We certainly uh, really enjoy hearing from you, and uh, we love telling stories about you as well. So thanks so much. Cheers, guys.